Hello guys and welcome to this tutorial where we are going to create a glass shatter effect. I have set up an empty product here. We got two assets, we have a background and we have a glass breaking wave file. And I have created an empty main scene. First off, we are going to create a glass shard. So click on scene, new scene, click on 2D scene. Rename this guy to glass shard here. Then right click on the node. Click Add Shell Node and find a Polygon 2D. Click on Add and click on Create. Next, right click the Glass Shot again. Click on Add Shell Node. And let's add a Collision Polygon 2D here and click Create. And finally, repeat the process. Right click, Add Node and find a Tween Node here. Click on that and click on Create. Now, go to Scene and click on Save Scene. And let's create a folder here for effects and create another folder shatter glass and save this as gloss shard.tscn click on save all right next we're going to create another scene for the shatter glass effect so click on scene new scene click on 2d scene and rename this guy to shatter glass Right click the node, click on add shell node, and find the timer, and click on create. And rename this guy to life timer. Now click on scene, save scene, and save this in the shatter glass effects folder here. And we're going to save it as shatterglass.tsen, so click on save. Next, let's create the script for this, so right click on the shatter glass node, and click on the attach script. Make sure it sets to C sharp here and click on create. In here, we are first going to add the using system.collections.generic so that we can use the C sharp list. Next, we are going to add a couple of variables in here. First off, we have number of gloss shard points, which is how many points we want to create on the sprite surface which we will break into triangles. The next variable is the triangle edge threshold, which is the threshold for creating triangles close to sprite edges. Then we have the min shatter force and the max shatter force, which is how strong we want the glass to shatter. And we have a force multiplier so we can multiply the shatter force and make it even stronger. Next we have the gloss shard lifetime here, which is how long the shards are gonna live. And this is defined in seconds. Then we have the glass shard overlap, which controls how much the glass shards can overlap. So if you set this to negative, they can go into each other. But if you set it to positive, they're going to bounce off each other. Then we have the glass shard scene, which is a scene that we just created for a single glass shard. Next, we have the triangle list here, which we will use to create the glass shards. And finally, we have the glass shard list, where we will store all the glass shards. Inside of the ready method, we will load in the glass shard scene. So let's start to implement our shatter glass effect. So here we have the setup shatter glass effect method. And here we first create a list of points. Let me check if the parent is a sprite. And if so, we're going to get the parent node. Then we're going to get the parent node rectangle. And as you can see, we have some methods here that we have not implemented yet. So we're going to do that now. We will start by implementing the add sprite corners method. And this guy looks like this. It takes in the list of the points and also the sprite rectangle. And all we do here is that we take the corners of the sprite and we add them to the points list. And next we have add random breakpoints. And this method looks like this. So what this method does is that it's going to create random breakpoints on the surface of the sprite. That we will use to create the triangles of and this guy takes in the list of points and also the sprite rectangle first of all we create a random number generator and we randomize the start number then we loop through the number of glass shard points that we want to have on the surface and then we create a new random point on the surface of the sprite then we're going to check if the point is too close to an edge and if so we're going to set it to the edge and we will do this for all the different edges that the sprite has. All right. 
And finally, we add a point to the list of points. The next method here is to calculate the gloss short triangles. And this guy looks like this. It takes in the list of points. And first, we're going to triangulate the point array by running the triangulate delineate to the method. Now, please correct me if I pronounce that wrong. Then we're going to loop through the array with three points at a time. And then we will add the three triangle points into the triangle list. Next, we have the create rigging body 2D shards method. And this guy looks like this. It takes in the sprite parent node. First, we loop through each triangle in the triangle list. So we're going to process three points in the list of triangles for each loop. First, we create a new instance of the gloss shard scene that we created earlier. Then we're going to run the method resize gloss shard triangles. So let's have a look at this guy. What we do is that we take in the gloss shard and the current triangle list index. First, we create the polygon for the triangle list, and we have to set it up as an array because the polygon here is a vector two array, but our triangle list is a list of vector twos. So that is why we set it up like this, so we can feed it into the polygon here. Okay, and then we set up the polygon with the polygon we just created. Then we're going to resize the gloss shards so they won't overlap. Let me check if there are any resized triangles here. And if so, we're going to typecast this vector2 because the geometry offset polygon returns an array. So it knows what type it is. And if there's nothing to do, we're just going to take the current polygon as it is. Next, we have to get gloss shard triangle center. And this guy looks like this. First, we take in the current triangle list index and we change it to a T to make it more readable here. So what we do is that we add up all the three X points and we divide them by three. And the same with the Y coordinates here for all the points and divide it by three. And then we will get the center of the triangle and we return that new vector here. Now back to create rigid body 2D shards. So what we do here is that we change the position to the gloss shard center. Then we're going to hide the gloss shard. And we're going to add the gloss shard to the gloss shard list. And then we're going to set the position for the polygon and the collision polygon. So we need to move these guys back to the same amount that we set the position to. So they will be centered as well. Right here. And finally, we set the texture of the polygon to the parent node texture. Let's scroll down here to the bottom. Next, we're going to add our method here called smash gloss. And this is the method we're going to use to smash the sprite into pieces. All right. So in here, we first create a new random generator and we randomize the start seed. Then we will run the hide parent sprite method. And that's really simple. It looks like this. We get the parent node. Then we get the self modulate of the parent. Then we update the alpha to be zero. Then we set the self modulate color to the new color, which is with alpha zero and zero. So it's going to be invisible. Next, we loop through all the gloss shards in the list. I'll move this to the side so you can see a bit better. All right, so here we get the impulse direction for this. And we're going to get the vector up. We're going to rotate that with a random amount with a range between 0 and 2. And we're going to multiply it with pi to get a good random direction for that. Then we're going to randomize the shatter force here. And this goes between the minimum shatter force and the max shatter force. And then we're going to apply the central impulse. And by doing this, we take the impulse direction, we multiply that with the shutter force, and then we multiply that with the force multiplier. Then we enable the collision for the gloss shard here, and we set the gloss shard to be visible. Then we have the fade up gloss shard method. So let's have a look at this guy. It takes in the gloss shard. Then we get the tween node from the gloss shard. Then we get the current modulate color of that. We set the target color is going to be 100% transparent or invisible. And then we're going to run the interpolate property here, which takes in the gloss shard. And we want to work on the modulate property. And we want to take the gloss shard modulate. And we're going to change that modulate into the target color. And we want to fade this out with the time of the gloss shard lifetime. And we're going to do this in a linear fashion. With the east type in here. 
and then we start the tween. So this guy will fade the shard out at the same speed as the life of the guard shard. All right. Now we can go back to the editor. So let's minimize. And we have a life timer here. So let's click on node. Double click the timeout. And we're going to attach this to the shatter cloth script. Now let's change this to a bit more C sharp standard. On life timer timeout. So select everything here, right click, copy, and click connect. And it's going to open up the Visual Studio Code editor for us. And now just type in private void and paste that in. And what we're going to do here is very simple. When the lifetime hits zero, you're going to free the parent node from memory, like so. And finally, let's go up here to the top. As you can see, we have the call deferred here, which is going to call the add gloss charge method. So let's add this guy in. What we're going to do here is loop through the list of the gloss shards. We're going to add them to the parent node. So this is all this guy is going to do. And finally, we can copy this guy. And we're going to run this whenever the ready method is run. Like so. So this is our script. Do a minimize here. Let's go to the main node. Right click the main node. Click on add child node. Find the sprite, click on that, click on create. And let's load the blue glass.png into this guy as a texture. And in order for this to work, you have to make sure that the offset is not centered. Otherwise, the break loss effect is not going to work as intended. Now, right click the main node, click on add shell node, and let's add an audio stream player. Click on create. Let's load the gloss break wave file in here. We can rename this guy to gloss break. It sounds like that. All right. And next, right click the spike node, click on instance shell scene, and find a shattered gloss.tscm file there and click on open. And now we need to create a script so we can run the shatter effect. We can also save this guy here. Scene, save scene. Go back to the main node. Right click the main node. Click on attach script. I'm going to create a new C sharp script. Main.cs. And click on create. And we're not going to use any of these guys. We can use the process method. And we can add a new private bool here to see if the gloss is smashed. And inside of the process method, we can just do the following. If the action is just pressed, the UE accept, which is going to be spacebar or enter, we can have a look at that in the project, product settings, input map. We're going to use this guy here, UE accept. You can either press enter, KP enter, space, or one of these buttons on the gamepad. So let's close this guy, go back to the code. So if the spacebar or the enter key is pressed, we're going to check if the gloss has not been smashed. And if so, we flag that the gloss has been smashed. Then we're going to access the shattered gloss node on the sprite node, which is the background image we loaded in. Then we're going to call the smash gloss method on that. And at the same time, we're going to play the audio stream gloss break sound as well. Okay, so let's save this guy. Control S or go on file save here. Let's minimize. And in here, go to the gloss shard. Right click the gloss shard and change the type. And this has to be a rigid body 2D here. So click on change, like so. And let's save the scene. Scene, save scene. So let's try this out. Now let's click on play. And let's click on spacebar. And it flies pretty nice. You can tweak the settings here, how much force you want to use. 100 and 200 and force multiplier by 20 and how many gloss shirts you want to have we can set this to one we can use 50 and there you have it 
So this is how you create a gloss shutter effect in the Godot engine. Thank you for watching this tutorial. You can download the source from my GitHub page. The link is in the description. Please like and subscribe and see you in another video. Bye for now.